Hey boys and girls, today we're going to be making this. It's a copper pipe alcohol stove, and we're not going to be using any of this stuff. So stay tuned, we get to play with fire today. Yay! First thing we need is some copper coil. So I got this at Home Depot. It's quarter inch outside diameter by 10 feet. Um, I don't really know if it says the inside diameter, but I don't think that's really important. So next thing we're going to need is a way to cut it. So you can use a hacksaw if you want, but these little pipe cutters um, make it a lot easier. Next thing we're going to need is a tap and die set, and this one is metric. You actually don't need the whole set, you just probably need an M7. Um, both the die and the tap. And that's the only thing that actually fits the outside of this tube. If you get a different tube, you probably need a different um, tap and die set. Um, also you're going to need probably a drill bit, a really small one. I'm going to try a 1 16th, but we may need to go up from there. Um, obviously, you're going to need a drill, too. You're also going to need a mason jar. Um, I've got some M7 bolt um, nuts and washers and other sort of stuff. And obviously, this is a mason jar with a little lid on it, so you'll need this as well. And then I mentioned the drill. What else do you need? Oh, yeah. Um, you're going to need some salt. Or sand and the reason for that is you're gonna fill the tube with the salt and this way when we're bending it it doesn't actually collapse on itself so we're gonna give that a shot I'm gonna use salt just because I didn't feel like going back to the hardware store and getting a bag of sand and with salt if it gets stuck in the tube I can just wash it out eventually it will dissolve at least I think it should all right so let's go ahead and get started with this thing all right first thing we're gonna do is probably cut the tube so let me go ahead and put this stuff up and we'll start doing that. I'm going to go ahead and play it safe and use about 12 inches of this. This is probably too much, but eh, this is the only thing I'm going to use this material for. So first thing you do is mark off your 12 inch line. Or if we figure out that it's less, we'll do less. So now go ahead and put the pipe cutter on. You know, tighten it up a little bit. And then all you need to do to cut this is basically just keep rotating it and tighten in this little screw just a little bit each time. And there you go. Nice clean little cut. All right, next thing is <clears throat> fill in this thing with salt. So first thing I'm gonna do is cap one end of this. And I'm not gonna like go ahead and show you this horrible process of trying to fill this thing with salt. But basically all I'm going to do is take a little piece of paper, uh, roll it into a very small funnel, and try to tediously get this salt in there piece by piece. So I won't show you that on camera because that's going to probably take a long time. So we'll come back when this is all filled up, and then I'll cap this end with the other little orange cap that comes with these copper pipes. All right. Okay, I lied. Don't actually use a paper tube. Just go ahead and pour the salt in directly into the tube over the sink, and it works a lot better. It didn't take any time to fill this thing up. So next thing you do is go ahead and cap off the end with that little orange tube. Hopefully you didn't lose them. If you did, um, you can basically kind of try to tape it on, um, try to tape over this and make sure it's really secure because this thing is going to need to, you know, bend under pressure. So we'll show you how to do that next. All right, so we've got this piece of pipe clamped up into the vise, and we're going to go ahead and use it to bend the um, copper pipe around. So all I did was I'm just starting a few inches up the pipe just to make sure that it doesn't touch the bottom of the glass. Even if it does, we can cut it off, so no big deal. So let's see how this works. Hopefully. It's probably an easier way to do this that I don't know, but... There you go. Nice little tube. This actually might be a little bit short, but we're going to try it anyway. Um, so next thing to do is probably going to separate this a little bit. I'm going to put it in the vise. Well, I'm going to wedge this in and then drill a little hole right about, uh, let's see here. Or I'm going to try to drill a hole right there. And I'm going to use, let's see, what am I going to use? I'm going to try to use a 1 16 inch bit, so I'll go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to do is dump out this salt, so I'll be back after I do that. All right, I lied. Actually, don't dump out the salt. I forgot that um, <clears throat> you're going to actually need it to make sure that um, 
you know, it keeps the structure while you're trying to drill through this little hole and also while we're trying to thread the ends of this. So ignore what I said, do not dump out the salt yet. But what you can do is go ahead and drill a little hole like I did right here. And I'll give you a little piece of advice. If you have a little um, punch tool, it makes it a lot more easy, a lot easier. Um, basically just mark a little hole there and then drill through it. Otherwise your drill is going to skate on that um, little piece of copper pipe for quite a while. So um, if you have one of these, use it. If you don't have one of these, go get one. They're like two bucks at Harbor Freight. All right. So next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start threading the ends of these um, ends. So I'll go ahead and put this in the in the um, vise and we'll get started on that. So I figured something out. Um, you actually don't need to clamp this down in the vise. In fact, when you do, it um, kind of makes it a little bit more harder to do. Copper is so soft that you can actually tap this by hand just by holding it. Although the tube does get a little bit warm. So there. That's all you need to do. So you see I tapped this end already, and this is with an M7. So I'll show you the bit after this. But let me just finish this up. And guys, you're gonna wanna go quite a bit ways down, probably like an inch overall. And I'll show you why we're gonna do, why I'm gonna do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and I'll show you, let's see if you can see that. Yeah, there's an M7 and 1.0. I don't know what these metric measurements mean, but um, this is the one that actually fits this pipe of pipe. So I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get started on the next step, which is drilling a hole in the top of this little canister. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is drill out two little holes that match up, you know, just make a little mark on here as to where these need to line up. And then I used a quarter inch drill bit to start off the holes since this is quarter inch tube and then used a little step drill to just kind of wallow it out. I don't know if that's a word. Um, and the reason is you don't want to force these threads through this um, plate. Um, you could, but you'd probably end up damaging them since copper is pretty soft. So what you want to do next is put two of these M7 nuts on the um, copper tube along with some washers. Put them through the um, little lid and then do the same thing on the other side. And you may need to take the little bars down on here, but I'm going to actually try to um, ratchet these down so it kind of compresses. Um, we'll see if it works or not, but let me go ahead and get um, do that. Okay guys, as you can see, what I did here was I went ahead and added a nut washer, then a washer, nut. This is a lock-in washer and another nut. Uh, the lock-in washer and the other nut probably aren't necessary, but I had them, so just decided to use them. Um, next thing I did was I went ahead and I didn't have any wick lying around because realistically, who has wick lying around? So I just took this um, piece of cord. Uh, it's a mixture of copper and not copper um cotton and some other blend and so all I did was I just um made four strands of it and then tied a knot in the end of it and so all you have to do now is just kind of feed this into the pipe itself and so usually what I did here was I just went ahead and kind of smushed it together and rolled it and then this will take a little bit of finagling but so you see, if you just keep twisting it, it'll go in. So, depending on what you have around, um, you can just use pure cotton, you can use a piece of rope. Um, heck, you could even cut up your old underwear and use it, but that'd be gross. Don't do that. All right. So, I'll go ahead and work that a little bit more, and then we'll give this a test run. So, I'm going to fill this up with some... 91 proof um, rubbing alcohol and then I'll probably need to prime this a few times for it to get started But we'll see if it actually works. All right, so I went ahead and tested this inside just to get her primed So hopefully she'll actually light on camera Oh, there she goes so 
I didn't really give this a test run, so let's see what happens. So the first run kind of sucked actually. Um, I made a few adjustments. So first thing, I made the hole just slightly bigger. So 1 16th, um, it could work, but I actually don't think that was the problem. But I think what was the problem was the material I was using for my wick. Um, it's I was using this stuff and I found that when I put it up here, um, it started to melt. So it started blocking up the holes there and then the um, couldn't get any fuel so what I did is I just switched out to regular old um, let's see if I can get this without burning myself because I've been testing this thing a little bit I just went ahead and used regular old gauze so standard cotton gauze so just doubled it up and stuffed it in there and it seems to be working so let's see if we can get a shot of this I might have to prime it again since I let all the pressure out, but let's see what happens. It's kind of a cool effect right there. I'm gonna turn off the light and you can see better. So, this thing is pretty blasted hot. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I could use it to cook something over it or you know keep a small space warm um, I'm not too happy with the flame right now it's kind of you see this orange flame so that means it's not um, it's not true good combustion so I'm gonna tweak it I'm gonna play with this a little bit more and see if I can get it to be a little bit better it seems to be getting a little bit better now that um, it's heating up it's actually turning a little blue in the center as I point to the fire with my finger that's that's really a smart thing to do yeah, but as you see this thing's going it is wow it is really hot up right above it so yeah i don't have any doubt that you could cook with this um as you see the flame is getting blue down at the center hopefully you can see that I'm going to turn this thing off and see if I can start it back really quickly. Oh, yeah, that came back quick. <laughs> Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. Wow. It's really bright. Alright guys, that's pretty much it. Simple project. Um, fun little thing to do. Probably not so useful in summer, but I guess if you needed a light source, if you had a hurricane or a tornado or, you know, for whatever reason, this will suit the bill. So I think it'd probably be more useful in winter, but um, it's a fun little project. All right, you guys have a good one. Hey guys, so I went ahead and did a few improvements and I think it's burning a little bit better now. Um, there's a little bit more blue, it's a little bit more consistent, no sputtering, and it is still really hot. <laughs> um, so what I did here is I changed the inside diameter of the um, circle itself and made it a little bit smaller. Originally it was about, um, I think it was about an inch and a half inside diameter, and now I've changed it down to about an inch. Next thing I did was I went ahead and changed the hole size. Um, it, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, but I went ahead and expanded that to a 764th um, inch um, little hole down at the bottom to let the fuel go through. I might experiment with making that even bigger, but um, 
the next bit I have up is a little bit too big um, so I need to go to the hardware store and grab one of those grab the next bit size up and then try that out but right now this has been burning for a little while um, it's a lot cleaner that little black soot you see on there is from the initial I guess coating on the copper tube um, burning off but as you see it's been burning for a little while now it's pretty consistent steady it's not too warm but that being said I would still suggest that you guys go ahead and put this inside a metal container probably like a little paint can like you can get from Home Depot or just something safe um, this is glass I never really trust you know glass and fuel around the place so I mean if you're burning this inside your home for whatever reason you know make sure you have it in a sealed container where you know if it does break it's contained in here and then you can simply just go ahead and um, you know put a lid on and put that fire out without any danger so that's just my two cents on that uh, so as you see this was a pretty successful little project um, I had to modify it a few times I went through a few different iterations so first one was this and I made another one trying to lengthen the tube and see if that improved I changed the hole diameter a little bit on this one um, I think this is probably the best design for me right now is that one inch inside diameter and a 7 64th inch hole so I'll go ahead and keep experimenting with this but this one seems to fit my need for right now and the good thing is I didn't need any of this stuff so you can go ahead and use some JB Weld on this if you wanted to but just keep in mind the heat's going to degrade that seal after a while and I don't really think you need it because once you clamp down on these nuts and these washers um, they're pretty much not going anywhere and then use a lock use a lock washer to keep them in place and you should be good so if you ever do need to replace you know the cap or whatever it is all you need to do is unscrew those nuts um, drill out a new little top plate and you know you're off to the races again so again really simple little project easy to do very cheap um, and I think everyone has one of these ball jars lying around so um, give it a shot you know obviously be safe about it and you know hopefully it's useful to you so if you like this go ahead and like and subscribe and we'll do more projects in the future all right guys you have a good one today's episode is brought to you by boredom